we're going to look at standard deviation, which is a measure of how spread out data is. If you're looking at your AQAS textbook, you can find this on page 127. So let's have a look at our objectives. We're going to understand how standard deviation works by looking at the equation bit by bit and pulling it to pieces. We're going to explain why standard deviation is a better measure of the spread outness of data compared to the range. And finally, we're going to calculate standard deviation either by hand or by using a calculator. So why do we bother to calculate standard deviation? Well, standard deviation by definition is the mean spread of data from the mean. And what it does is it eliminates the effect of any outliers because it's an average spread of data. It calculates the average spread of every single data point and looks at how far it is away from the mean of that data set. And for that reason, it's preferable to the range because the range just says, uh, let's have a look at the smallest value and the largest value and work out the difference. It doesn't take into account any clustering of data around the mean, which we'll talk about just now. So hey, look, here's a normal distribution or a bell curve. What we find is that we, if we do some measurements in biology, like we might measure height of a population, or we might measure leg length, or we might measure middle finger length, or we might measure the diameter of the trunk of an elephant, we find that the frequencies of the different lengths, the different measurements, if we plotted them on a graph, they'd form this bell curve where we get not many large values and not many small values. We have quite a lot of values clustered around the mean. So we actually find that 68% of values are clustered within one standard deviation of the mean. We find that 95% of values are clustered within 95% standard deviation of the mean, or 95% are clustered within two standard deviations of the mean, I should say. Then we find that 99%, so still not everyone, well, they're within three standard deviations of the mean. So even if we spread out to three standard deviations, we still haven't got the smallest value or the largest value. So here's the equation. We've got s, or lowercase sigma sometimes, which refers to the standard deviation, which is what we want to calculate. We've got capital sigma, which means the sum of, so add it all up. And in that bracket at the top there, we've got x, which is each of the data values that we have, x bar, which is the mean of all of the values in the data set. And then we have n, which is the number of values in the data set. So let's look at that and pull it to pieces. So by doing x minus x bar, by taking every single data point and comparing it to the mean, we're looking at how far away each data point is from the mean. So that's the comparison part. By squaring that value, we eliminate any negative values. So we're not looking at you know whether something is bigger than the mean, whether something is smaller than the mean. We're just looking for a numerical value. How far is it from the mean? By adding it all up and dividing it by n, or how many numbers we have, Hey, look, that's calculating a mean. So, so far, we've calculated the mean spread of data away from the mean. But there's a problem. We squared something earlier, so what we need to do is we need to get rid of the effect of that squaring and root the lot. So let's look at how we calculate this by hand. Your first step is to calculate x bar, which is your mean. Step two, we write out the entire equation with all the values that we have substituted in. Step three, we calculate each bracket and square it out. Step four, we sum the squared brackets and divide by the sample size. And step five, we root the lot. So let's do an example. Let's imagine we've got to calculate the standard deviation of 7, 15, 18, and 20. A very, very small sample size, but it's good for this. So the first thing to do is we calculate the mean. So everyone can do this. 7 plus 15 plus 18 plus 20. Divide the lot by 4 gives us our mean or x bar of 15. Now we're going to write out the whole equation with all the values substituted in. That's my top line. Divide by n and root the lot. There we go. So our next step is going to be to calculate each bracket and square it out and rewrite it. There we go. There's the whole equation rewritten. Step four is going to be to sum those and divide by the sample size. There we go. So 98 over 4 rooted is equal to 24.5 rooted. Don't forget to square root. A lot of people leave this behind and somehow get lost. Step 5, we square root. So that gives our answer for standard deviation of that sample of 4.95 to 3 significant figures. So the question is now, well, how do we do that on a calculator? 
In this example, I'm going to show you how to do it with a Casio FX83ES, which is one of the more common varieties that you might have experienced as a student. So, first thing we're going to do, we're going to switch it on. We're then going to go into the mode menu, and we're going to go into stats mode. We're going to choose one variable by pressing number one, and that brings us up with this table. We're going to add our data values in, pressing equals in between each data, thus adding them to the table. Last one, number 20, there we go. Now we're going to add it to the calculator's memory by pressing M+, plus, and now we can clear it. We're then going to go into the stats menu by pressing shift and 1, and we're going to choose variance, which in this case is number 5. Then number 3 is the standard deviation of our sample, and we're going to press equals, and there is our standard deviation. So to summarize, standard deviation is a measure of the spread outness of data. It compares every single data point to the mean, and it eliminates outliers, unlike the range.